you know, sometimes kids are brats. And I think it can be really reassuring to a kid to see that, look, even these kids are brats. Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Happy Home. I'm Tanya, a doctor, lawyer, turned homeschooling mom of three kids, ages eight, five, and three. For those of you who have been regular subscribers, you know that I'm doing a series this year on parenting emotionally complex kids with Danielle over at Danielle Gets It Done. Danielle's a working mom who has a four-year-old son, James, and she's doing an amazing job of navigating the sometimes rough and confusing waters of having a child who's not totally neurotypical, who might have greater meltdowns and greater difficulties with transitions and life in general than a neurotypical child. So if you haven't checked out Danielle's channel yet, you definitely should. She is very honest and open and raw in her videos and I really learn a lot from her. And especially if you have younger kids who are going through some difficulties with transitioning into school and things like that, she's a great person to sort of travel with on your journey. So today Danielle and I are both talking about managing meltdowns and in particular managing our kids' meltdowns, not our own. On a later date, we will talk about managing our own meltdowns, and I sometimes think that that's as valuable, if not more so, and definitely ties in a lot with decreasing your child's meltdowns. But that's a topic for another video. Regarding meltdowns, my first point would be that no one child is like the other. I think it can come as a shock to any mom who has two or more children that each one is very, very different, full of their own wonderfulness and their own foibles. And what works to soothe one child might not work at all to soothe the other one, but in fact might make them more angry with you. And that starts right at infancy and beyond. Um, if you have a toddler, uh, with meltdowns, it's very different than how you handle sort of a four-year-old or a six-year-old or an eight-year-old's meltdowns. My eldest is eight and he has ADHD and the way I handle his meltdowns has taught me a lot about how to more compassionately handle my other more neurotypical children's meltdowns because as I've said many times before, I truly think a lot of this hypersensitivity and emotional complexity is on a spectrum and some of them we've given names to and some of them we haven't and I think sometimes we do a disservice to our neurotypical children by expecting them to just get things easier and to get over things easier when really their little brains are developing too. A lot of our ability to regulate anger and to have self-control does not physiologically develop until we are older. So sometimes when we expect a toddler or a preschooler to regulate their emotions in the face of disappointment or a change in plans or a cookie they can't have or what have you, um, we are asking them to do something that they physically are not capable of doing yet. So one of the best things we can do is to meet them where they are as people, to not baby them, but to acknowledge what they're feeling and to validate that they are justified in that. When they fall and get hurt or when they're disappointed because they can't have a second cookie, um, instead of saying, you shouldn't make a big deal about this, you should feel grateful for the first cookie, you should you know, go brush your teeth now because I say so and this discussion is over, it's much more effective to say, I understand that you're feeling disappointed right now, I understand that you wanted a second cookie, but in our house, we don't do that. Or to involve them in the state of affairs is not being so personal as being sort of a matter-of-fact thing. You're not doing this to punish them, you're not being punitive, you are simply letting them know how life is in your family and nevertheless you acknowledge that you're sorry for their hurt, that, that you understand what they're going through, that you have been disappointed. I might be disappointed too, but you know, right, that you'll get a cookie tomorrow, that, you know, this is not the end of the world and we'll do some other thing that you like right after. If we go brush your teeth right now, we can then read our story and we can have our dance and then we can get ready for bed. Won't that be fun? I can fly you up the stairs. Sometimes a lot of things that help are a little bit of distraction. So, sorry I'm a little bit all over the place, but meltdowns are complicated. They're each different from one another. The children are different, their responses are different, and each circumstance is very different. So, they have their meltdown and they're feeling this anger and they're smacking their hands on the floor if they're little or if they're older, in the case of ADHD, they're um, refusing to budge. They won't get up from their seat. They won't go 
to change their clothes. They won't do whatever it is you want them to do. They won't get in the car. They won't get out of the car. They won't come out of the park. They won't go to the park. <laughs> they have many little feelings in their bodies, you know, big feelings rather in their little bodies. And I have found the most helpful thing is just to acknowledge what is happening. I see that you're clenching your little fists. Narration really helps. I see that you're clenching your fists and you're stamping your feet and you're not moving from your chair. I think this means you're upset. Um, are you upset? Sometimes asking them, giving them the space to say yes or no or correct you is really validating to them that you're not just telling them exactly how to feel or what they feel, but you're asking them, like, I see these signs. Are you feeling upset? Um, and sometimes my kids have said no, and then I'll say, you know, are you feeling sad? I just interject another word, and they'll say yes. And their whole entire body changes, their demeanor changes towards me and the situation. And they wait to see what I'll say next, because now they know it's a conversation and not just a lecture. And I'll say things like, you know, do you want me to come over and give you a hug? Is there a way I can help you? Like, is there a way I can make you feel better? And sometimes it's like, give me another cookie. And I'll say, we're not going to be doing that because in our house, and again, I reiterate the rule. And then I'll say something like, but I would love to give you a hug because I would like to see you smile again, you know? And I think that this calm sort of matter of fact conversation with them is really reassuring to them. And it allows them to have their feeling. No one's mad at them for being upset. No one's ignoring them for being upset. You're saying, I see you. I see that you're upset. How can we help? We're not giving in to them. We're not giving them the next cookie, but we're saying like, I want to help you. I'm on your team. Again, it comes back to that idea, right? That the more we can tell our kids we're on your side, I'm on your team. Like I'm your best helper and your best friend and I will always root for you. And I want you to be happy. Not at the expense of, you know, discipline and following the rules, but I will do what I can in this moment to help you through this emotional storm that you're in. And even as adults sometimes, don't we want that? Don't we want somebody to say, I see you're really upset about this. How can I help you right now? So that technique works incredibly well with my toddler. The second tip beyond narration and engaging them in a conversation is to basically um, distract them. <laughs> to say, you know, new shiny object um, without it being out of your normal routine. So if going back to this cookie dessert example, if the next step in your routine would be to go upstairs to brush your teeth, maybe make going upstairs a little bit more fun than usual. You know, would you like to fly up the stairs? Would you like to bunny hop to the stairs? Would you like to do something like that? And often with a toddler, that can be really helpful. It just sort of switches the gears in their head and they follow along. With an older child, for example, my son is now eight, engaging him in the conversation definitely helps. Um, and I'll tell you, it's a lot harder to maintain your own cool when an older child is having a meltdown because you have this expectation because of their size and everything that they should be more mature at this point. And especially for me with a son with ADHD, it's a constant battle with myself to remind myself that, you know what, he is not physiologically there yet. Whereas an average eight year old might be able to control themselves in this situation, my son simply cannot yet. And I have gotten into the habit sometimes of now training myself to think of my five year old and my eight year old as emotional twins. So that how I behave towards my five year old and what I expect of her in terms of emotional maturity is what I expect of my son as well. And it definitely creates a gentler um, rapport between us and it's been very very helpful. Beyond narrating their feelings, engaging them in conversation, and then maybe distracting them, another really helpful thing to do is to give them tools to share their feelings with you, especially if the upset continues. When you have an older child a lot of times it's not the issue of a cookie. It's more the issue of going on a play date or something that actually affects a, a greater span of time in their lives, not being able to play Minecraft, um, not getting whatever they want from the store, something like that. In that instance, giving them an opportunity to hold their feelings and then to put them out into a safe place is really helpful. For my son, he's very um, gifted in language arts and he's twice exceptional, so he's gifted and he has ADHD. And um, 
he enjoys putting his feelings out on paper. He'll write stories, he'll write poems, he'll write. And um, I've created a mommy and me journal for him and I where if I get upset with him, I will write to him in it. If I'm super proud of him, I'll write to him in it. If he gets upset with me, he can write to me in it as well. If he feels happy on some day, he can write to me. And it's just a safe place. And I encourage him to write whatever he feels. And the way I show him that is I write whatever I feel as well. And when I feel angry about something, I say those words. I say, I felt really angry today when, you know, you did X, Y, and Z. But I know that, you know, I could have reacted better or I did react better. And this is the reason I felt angry, whatever it is. I show him that, you know, everything we say to each other doesn't have to always be sunshine and roses. Sometimes we can tell each other the hard stuff. And that's okay because he's getting older and he's starting to understand that while I might not like something he did, I will always love him. I will always be on his team. And the way I show him is by being honest and giving him a safe space to tell me the same. I think my son's first entry to me in the Mommy and Me journal was something like, I don't like you all the time, but I love you. And I thought that was so perfect because honestly, I feel that way about my kids sometimes. I don't like them all the time. Sometimes they are being really annoying. Um, but I love them always. And I always want them to feel safe with me. I always want them to feel that I am proud of them, that they are safe in this house with me, this life with me. Um, sometimes I do a better job of that than other times. But I think transparency, allowing for feelings to be a safe thing, that negative feelings are normal, is really, really helpful. I think it's really helpful for kids to have the opportunity to discuss the things that might cause tantrums before the tantrum occurs. So part of our regular homeschool curriculum is to talk about spirit and spiritual development. And at their age in early elementary, a lot of what I talk about, because we are a secular family, we're Unitarian Universalists, is um, emotional management. And we read a lot of books about it. We talk about anger. We do cosmic yoga, which is a YouTube channel. Um, we talk about calming ourselves. We talk about how everyone is responsible for their own feelings and feelings are okay. But when you have a tantrum, that is your responsibility. Having a tantrum, whether it's the mom having a tantrum or your friend having a tantrum or you, it is coming from yourself. It's not because of whoever caused it. So if your sister breaks your Lego tower and you throw a tantrum and smack her, that is on you. That is not your um, sister's fault. And having that discussion before you have a Lego tower, before that tantrum happens, is really helpful because then when it actually happens, you can discuss with them. Remember when we were reading that book about managing your anger? What are some of the better ways we could have done that? And because you talk to them about it when you were calm, it really, really helps. Now, I don't have like a calm down spot or a glitter jar or any of those things, but I do have a few things um, that I wanted to show you that I found helpful in my house. Um, I think a lot of those things can be really helpful and I think Danielle might show you some of those things. I think being able to, uh, you know, have a tool to help you calm down is really, really powerful for a child and an adult. This is one thing that I got from Daiso once and it's just a little oil and water dropper thing. It's very soothing to watch and sometimes if one of my kids is just getting really worked up, I'll say like, you know, why don't you go sit and just watch this for a little while until it all falls down and it'll give you a chance to think about your feelings, you know, to really think about, is this a big deal? Is this a small deal? Is it a medium deal? And maybe you can come back and talk about it more calmly with me or with your sister or with whoever. So something like this, a glitter jar, something to watch um, can be really helpful. Play-Doh, silly putty can be really helpful. Something to just sort of get out that squeezing feeling of um, anxiety. We always say, you know, if you need to hit something, go hit a pillow. I'm not of the ilk that says you should never hit anything or you should never feel that frustration like, out on physical objects. I think you should. And I think you should have a way to sort of get that tension out in a physical way, especially for children, you know, it, it builds up in them. And I don't want to teach them that it's, it's wrong to ever show your anger, you know, 
um, stomp your foot. It doesn't matter. Like, get out the feeling. They're not stomping their feet to make you mad. They're stomping their feet because this feeling of, like, frustration is building up inside them and it's translating into, like, a motor action. Let that happen. Nothing gets hurt when they stomp their foot. Um, and so there are safe ways to get out your frustration that don't involve hitting others, hurting others, screaming, um, hurting themselves, etc. So those are the behaviors we want to curtail and we want to encourage good ways of getting out your emotions. Um, another thing I wanted to show you is something I've talked about before and it's this game, How Do I Feel, made by Early Learning Box. And um, I'll link their store down below. But it's great because it gives you all these little cards and you can talk about situations that might produce frustration and just discuss them. So every few days we, we just talk about these. And this one says, everybody is too busy to play with me right now. Our new baby is fussy today. I hope the baby doesn't cry. I scraped my knee on the sidewalk. I played outside after dinner. Now it's getting dark. So setting you and them up for these situations that might be anxiety producing, that might be rage producing, but you talk about it beforehand. The other nice thing about this game is that it not only comes with the situational cards, but also with these cute little faces that show emotions. So here you have like hurt with a boo-boo. Um, here you have mad. And I keep these out in just a basket and Sometimes during the school day, if they want to just tell me how they're feeling without having to muster up the strength to say it in a respectful tone or anything, they can just get the card. And I've had kids pick up a card and slam it down in front of me. And, you know, I say, you know, I think we could have done that in a nicer way, but I see that you're feeling frustrated. I see that you're feeling um, surprised. You know, it's, it's a safe way again for them to express their emotions. So this is what we're trying to teach, right? That feelings are okay, emotions are okay, getting mad is a normal thing, but there are healthy ways to express it and not so healthy ways to express it. So we're all learning together. Mommy, you, um, all of us in this house are learning together how to better express ourselves to each other because we're all on the same team. Coming back to that team thing. Other things we've gotten recently have been these two books, and I really like this one. This is How to Take the Grr Out of Anger. But it, it talks about different people you can go to for help when you have an issue. It talks about steps to taming your temper. I think this one's really good, especially as your child gets to be more around seven or eight. Sitting still like a frog is just mindfulness exercises, and we've started to do this. We haven't followed every single exercise in the book yet, but I try to do a little bit of sitting still time. We really haven't gotten to more than five minutes of it or so, and it's not um, sitting still the entire time. Usually we'll sit still for a minute or so and breathe together, and then we'll do quiet coloring and listen to peaceful music for a little bit, and just have like a little five minute block of silence just to sort of reset their calmness. Another series that's really good is this series by Joy Berry. We actually have the entire series. I think it's about 20 bucks maybe. Um, and they go through different topics. So like being a bad sport, being bossy, being naughty, being um, like lying, snooping, cheating, all of these things that, uh, you know, our parents try to teach us not to do. So the two I wanted to show you was just um, a children's book about complaining and a children's book about throwing tantrums. So just to show you how each one is set up, it tells you who the characters are every time. It has a very simple graphic page, not very many words at all. And it says things like, you might become angry if you cannot have something you want, you might want to throw a tantrum. I really like these books because it normalizes the misbehaviors that all children engage in and it lets them know that, you know, they're not the only kid in the world being a little bit of a brat sometimes. <laughs> that, look, it exists so often that they created books about it. It says the honest truth though, like, if you might bother the people around you if you throw a tantrum, they might decide they don't want to be around you. And I like the honest approach in these books. These are older, I think they were published, let me see. Yeah, these are copyright 1988. And just as an aside, I do think that a lot of books geared towards children about good behavior nowadays and the right way to handle a situation, I think they're really dishonest sometimes. <laughs> and I think, they minimize the fact that we aren't perfect. I think they emphasize the fact that we're all special, beautiful butterflies, but they don't talk about the 
uglier side of being a kid. They don't talk about how, you know, sometimes kids are brats. And I think it can be really reassuring to a kid to see that, look, even these kids are brats. <laughs> like, and this is the way to handle that feeling. And this is the way to perhaps do better. Because um, I think a lot of books today act like kids are just so wonderful. And I just think that that hurts them in the long run, you know? Um, sometimes we need to learn how to be wonderful. Sometimes we need to learn how to live in this world with other people. And it helps have real examples. So some of the older books have better examples of realistic children, I think. <laughs> Speaking of older books, another set of books that I love is the Ready, Set, Grow series. And I have this entire series too. I bought them off of eBay. These are fantastic. I think these were even older. I think they're published in the 70s. Let me see. Copyright 1979, the year I was born. Um, so You're All Right, Joy Wilt. And this is um, just three of them that I picked up. This is about human similarities and how you know, even in frustration, like we are the same and, and it talks about different races and different ages and everything. This is handling your disagreements and this one's handling your ups and downs. And I really love how these books talk about um, real feelings, how sometimes you're just sad for no reason. What can you do when you feel that way? Sometimes you're mad and you cannot get a handle on it. I've had my son tell me, you know, I'm trying, mommy, I just don't know why I speak to you disrespectfully. And I know he's telling the truth. It's harder for him. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about how we can scaffold each other through the process. And I tell them, you know, be my helper when I lose my temper and I'll be yours. Um, again, coming back to the team. So this one has just situations about being lonely. It talks about being jealous and it's it's really nice and graphic it has little cartoons in it but it also has um, just stuff about you know how you can make other people's lives better too and I like that it has this focus on not just yourself but how you can raise up other people when they're having troubles as well um, so these are some of the things that we use I hope this video was helpful for you I'm sorry I was a little bit all over the place I feel like meltdowns are one of those things where it's important to narrate how the kid's feeling. It's important to catch hold of your own emotions, to see in front of you what's really happening, and to be respectful with them. Be the parent while also letting them converse with you. Let them know that you're on their team and bring them along with you out of it. You know, um, I think sometimes we want to shut down a kid's tantrum. Like, don't behave that way. This is unacceptable for your age group. You need to pull it together. This is whatever. And I don't think it's the best way of letting kids know that feelings are safe, that feelings are okay. Oh, before I forget, one of the most helpful things for my kids to understand this concept is for me telling them that feelings are like the weather. Feelings are like the weather. They come and they go. And just like the weather, sometimes you're going to have rainy days and stormy days and thundery days. And sometimes you're going to have beautiful sunny days. And sometimes it's just a little spring shower. So you get sad, you have a little rain, and then you're happy again and it's sunny. And sometimes it's a stormy day and you might just be a grump that day. And that's okay. You just can't take it out on other people. Your feelings are totally fine. They are the weather. They make the world the beautiful place it is. So that idea has really resonated with all my kids. That this idea that the weather changes, you can expect bad days, and that's totally fine. The last thing I wanted to say, and I didn't want to forget, is my most helpful phrase for you, if you take nothing else from this video, is three words long, and it's simply, I am here. I have found that with all my children from ages like two on, um, sometimes they are so in the throes of their emotional meltdown that they are not listening. They're not actually hearing anything you're saying. So attempting to converse with them can be useless. And all I do is I hold my hand out and I'll touch their shoulder gently or I'll touch their hand and I'll say, I am here. Three words, I am here. And sometimes that's all they need to hear from you is that you are sitting with them in this emotional storm, that you're not afraid of them, you're not ashamed of them, you are not going to run away from this storm that's consuming them. Um, you love them and you are there. You will sit with them until this passes because it is okay that this is happening. It is normal. I have a sign on my phone that says, I am your calm. You are my wild. And that is true of our children. Be their calm. They can be your wild. 
but hold them in a safe space when they have a meltdown. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. I'm sorry that it was a little bit all over the place. I feel like meltdowns are complicated and that they're very unique and different every time. But emphasize that you are on their team. Say, I am here. Try to engage them in a conversation. Narrate what you see. Ask them how they're feeling. And give them education about meltdowns and feelings and tantrums when they're feeling calm. Talk to them about how they can best manage these things when they're feeling calm. So in any case, don't forget to check out Danielle's video. And as always, I wish you the very best day. Thanks so much for watching.